Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I have the pleasure of having with me uh, Natasha Bazil from Virtual Properties Realty. This is the first of many side-by-side uh, -side videos that I'm going to be interviewing uh, agents from outside of New York City. Uh, she's from the metro Atlanta area. I mean, there's a lot of demand. Let's face it. Uh, New York City is getting very expensive. And people in the life life has changed after COVID. Where people can work wherever they want to now, for the for the most part, okay. And a lot of people that I've spoken to, as a matter of fact, we're working on a mutual client that's going to the Metro Atlanta area. Uh, and uh, so, Natasha, welcome. Thank you, thank you. I'm excited. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah. So the first thing I wanted to cover is, I mean, I want to cover two things, right? And we're going to talk about a few other things. Um, one is, you know, if somebody's selling, I get that a lot. If somebody's selling. And needs to buy out of state. And then the second thing that we're going to cover is if somebody is not selling and just buying for the first time <clears throat> and they're looking at their options, uh, not only in New York City, but out of state, what should they do? So in, in an ideal situation, let's say you have the perfect world, we're going to go over scenarios. If somebody's selling here in New York, either in Long Island, New York City, and moving over to Atlanta, what would be like the ideal process? Okay, so the ideal process. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it depends. It depends yeah. on are they are they interested in coming to Georgia and buying resale or are they buying new construction? Right. And why that's a difference is the time frame to close. So if they're looking at buying resale, a seller is looking for them to close within 30, maybe 45 days at max. So if they have a whole house to sell in New York. We need to get that listed under contract and, you know, that ball rolling so that they need to get in contact with you. They, you know, and we need to be in communication. Um, so that needs to be rolling. If they are buying new construction, timeframes vary because if they're buying a spec home, it may be ready within 30 to 90 days. If they are um, buying a presale, they're picking a lot and they're building from scratch. It might be four to six months, maybe more. So it just depends. Um, and at that point, now we need to see, okay, what, what builds are they interested in? And what is that builder's policy on a home that is contingent on a home that they have to sell? So I have to find, you know, I have to identify what they want here and what are the builder's um, policies and then also coordinate with you um, on the logistics of what's going on in New York. Okay. So, so coordination is big, right? Like if you have an, an agent over here, and this is why we're coordinating, especially on, you know, coordination over here and coordinating with you, because I mean, one of the things that happens uh, in, in Atlanta, there's no attorney involved. Right. So you guys can close 30 days. I mean, you tell that to a New York agent. I mean, they would be super happy. That doesn't usually happen unless it's a cash deal. Okay. Typically in New York, it takes two or three months. So that mm -hmm. imagine that if they're if they're on the market over here, they got to get a buyer. Uh, you know, by the time you get into first of all, you get exposed to the market. Then you got to get a buyer. They got to go through the inspection. Then they got to go with the the attorney, you know, contract review, and then you get into contracts. So we're talking about four or five months. So, so it really needs to be coordinated, especially in Atlanta, which is thirty days for something that is pre-sale, which is some some uh, a house that already exists, right? So I, right. I guess one of the things that I, I think we spoke about a little bit about, I, I always tell people to go out there, right, first before they even let's say if you're if you're looking to sell in New York. And you're looking to move somewhere, you should have you should be thinking about this a year, two years, three years on the line, right? I mean, and maybe visiting the area and talking to you, right? Right, right. So just the thing that you said before, a house that already exists, resale. So yeah. resale, existing house, pre-sale is buying new construction, buying a lot. But yeah, definitely starting in advance because you might have in your mind, yeah, I want to move to George. You might have heard they have lower pricing, but do you really like? the areas and then what area do you want to live in so I would vacation take your next vacation here and then visit the different cities and um, you know get a feel and see if you even like it here so I have one gentleman I'm working with now he is going to retire in the next seven or so years but he wants to buy the house now and when he retires he'll come down so he's not actually going to move now but he wants to get the house so it's all kind of different options that you have but definitely you want to visit. Some people come down and visit family and they like it. So, you know, yeah. it just depends. So how would that work if I'm selling my house, right? And I want to buy something, a pre-sale, a house that is not a new construction, right? Resale. Um, what is it? 
Resale. Resale. Sorry, Our, resale. Uh, yeah, uh, a resale, right? If if I am buying a resale, like how does the process work? I submit an offer and talk, walk me through that process. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, so it. Okay, so we are going. So I'm assuming the client is in New York. Right. Yeah. So we have connected. They reached out to me. We've had our consultation via phone, like 15 minutes, and then, um, you know, go through some questions. Um, and then we schedule for a Zoom a more in detail. And I'll get into what some, some of those questions are later. But um, now we're, you know, forming kind of a game plan. Okay. You have a house to sell. When is it going to market? Do you have an agent? When is it listing? That kind of thing. I'm sending them up on a, a online search um, so they can start identifying properties that they want to see. Um, I am their eyes and ears here. So um, we also talk about how, how does that look for them? Are they coming in town to see property? Um, are they coming in town once they're under contract during their due diligence period, their inspection period to see property? Um, I've had people that have relocated and have never come in town or have not come in town until closing. Like, yeah, that was a lot of trust, but some, some different people, different strokes with different folks. But when it comes to putting in the offer, now it has to be contingent on their home selling. Not all sellers are going to go for that, right? But we want to package it up as nice as possible. It is easier for them to accept or consider if they know, okay, this house has been listed. There's actual form that lists the house that they're selling, um, the address. Um, it's going to have the agent's information. Like they want to know the specifics, not just mm -hmm. I'm going to sell it. That's not going to fly. Um, so they need to know the specifics of it and they'll probably check to make sure it is in fact listed and, and further past being listed, it most likely needs to be under contract, um, cause they want a guarantee on their end. Because if you think about it, you're asking that seller to take their home off the market and yeah. wait, wait for you to close on your home. So it's, a it's a lot of risk on their end. So In they this market, want, especially which houses, oh, right. Sell. Yeah. Right. So they want as much assurance um, as possible. OK. And so basically when because in New York, when you submit an offer, it's not binding until two parties in between. You do the inspection and then once two parties sign, then it's with the attorneys, then it's binding. But when mm -hmm. you accept an offer, is it binding over there? Oh, man, this is good. This, yeah. I'm so glad <laughs> we're yeah. doing. This. Yes. To go binding in Georgia. Want the buyer submits the offer. Once the seller signs, one of the agents is making it binding right then. There is no attorney has to get involved. So let's say uh, we submit it on Saturday. The seller signs on Sunday. We are either binding Sunday or Monday. It, okay. You're binding quickly. Okay. So there's no attorney involved. Is, is the inspection done after the binding contract is signed or... So it's subject yeah. to an inspection after the contract. Yes. So yeah, once um, we're binding, that's when the clock starts. So that's when your inspection period starts. That's when the appraisal is, you know, after inspection, appraisal is ordered um, and, and that is done. So the attorney is written in in the contract. This is the attorney that we'll be using and they're going to run title and things like that. But they don't really have to. Okay. Yeah, they don't have to review the contract or I mean, you, you know, they'll get it because they'll open a file to run title and things like that. So, yeah. And title comes back like within how long? I would say two weeks, maybe less. It just depends on when the attorney, you know, pulls it, uh, you know, as long as they, you know, pull it yeah. sooner rather than later. But yeah. It and lenders are ready to close 30 to 45 days after that binding contract. Yes. You have some lenders can get it done in seven to 14 days on some rush cases. So we can close quickly. Like I've had situations where one lender couldn't do it and they were on the hook and they went to another lender, got approved and they could, they could turn it over. So in, in, in a week or two, so it can be done quickly. So it's a whole different, it's a whole different world. I mean, <laughs> ideally, I mean, I, I think like I do, like I, sometimes I tell people if you're in a situation and you're, you're buying resale, right. I said it right this time. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, um, better sometimes even to sell your house you know if you have a family member or if you can you know find a situation where you have the cash right 
And now when you submit that offer, ooh, it's a big down payment. You can see the proof of funds. You're going to get that offer accepted instead of having some sort of contingency. Because contingencies are always, especially in this market, could be a problem. Now, walk me through the scenario. New construction. Same thing, but what's the process You know, for new construction? Let's say I'm selling a house over here. They reach out to you. We, we, we want new construction. If I'm going out of state, I don't want anything that's already built. I want new construction. Uh, talk to okay. me. Okay. Okay, so with the new construction, pretty much the same process that with, you know, um, having the console, we're having a Zoom, setting up on a search, uh, and we're identifying builders. Now, not all builders are listed in the MLS. So then I'm also, because I specialize in new construction, I'm sending them things as well. And we're pretty much identifying what builders they like, what type of floor plans, what, you know, what what houses, what price point they want to be and all that that stuff, right? So when we they've narrowed it down, they say, okay, I'm interested. If the builder already has, let's just say they like the Taylor floor plan. Uh, I'm reaching out to the community. Do you have one that's already up so that they can see it, get an idea of what it looks like in person? Of course, they have the, the tours online. And then I'm also finding out all the details. What are your incentives? What um, What's your build time? What do you have um, available, you know, depending if, you know, what's coming up, if they need to move in the next four months or or do you even offer pre-sale because not all builders offer pre-sale all they offer are spec homes I just have to see what the builder offers now when it comes to doing um a con well no go back I have to find out what their policy is on them having a home to sell the crazy market that we got out of some builders they would only accept it if the house uh was under contract and that Sounds easy, but it put people in a bind because houses were selling like this. Yeah. So, you know, a seller was kind of scary to put their house under contract and not even know or the build time of that house was going to be, you know, further out. It was just a crazy, a crazy period. So thankfully now we are seeing builders come around to saying, okay, we will allow you if you have a house to sell, but if it's being built, um, some say like 90 or 120 days from closing, the house needs to be listed. Um, or, you know, if and when the house reaches drywall, the house needs to be listed. So they'll give us what time frames and we'll go from there. Okay, very good. I mean, there's, there's a lot involved. So Natasha, I mean, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, because I know the best thing to do, and, I, and if you're looking to sell and buy in an Atlanta metro area, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you're looking to buy and explore and move into Atlanta metro area, the best thing to do is to do, uh, you, you offer a Zoom consultation, right? Or a phone call right. consultation where you can speak to people and because it's it's complicated, right? And we can go and speak for another hour and every scenario is different, okay? So yes. we just wanted to give you a snippet of it in this video. How can yes. they reach out to you? Awesome. Well, again, I appreciate you so much for having me. This was great. Um, it is complicated. I know somebody's watching, they're like, oh, that's a lot. But that's why you have your trusted professionals. That's why you have myself and you have Roth, right? So did I say that right, Raf? Yeah, Roth. I say that, Raf. Yeah. Uh, Raf, as a matter of fact, my, my Instagram and everything else called real estate Raf. Raf. People call me Raf. Yeah. Raf. All right. <laughs> you have myself and you have Raf. Exactly. That are going to guide you. And that's another important thing, like, some might say real, real estate agents are dime a dozen. You need to make sure you're working with true professionals that actually know what they're doing. So how you get in contact with me, I am sold by Nat on all platforms. My phone number is 404-857-2508. My website is sold by Nat. And also I'm gonna give you this website. If you are considering moving to Georgia, uh, please go ahead and check out sold by Nat forward slash move to GA. I have on there, it's going to be a free guide, a downloadable guide on starting your process um, on moving to Georgia. Like what questions do you need to consider? Like, and I have it broken down real simple. Who, what, when, where, why? It's like, who's going to be moving? Are you considering construction a new sale? I'm um, sorry, resale. Do you have a home to sell? When do you want to close here? Um, why are you even moving to Georgia? Uh, are you getting a, a mortgage? Are you paying cash? Or the home that you're selling there, are you using the proceeds or 
all of it or some of it to buy the home here. And then also kind of going through like, what steps um, should you be taking or what um, visits should you be making to Georgia and all that good stuff. So again, soulbynat.com forward slash move to GA. That is great information. And this is, I mean, I learned a lot from this and we're going to be going through a lot because we have, like I said, we have a mutual client, so we're going to be working together. But thank you so so much, uh, Natasha, and soulbynat.com, everybody, soulbynat. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll speak soon, okay? 